Dream Center Church is a restoring place, a place where we make disciples of Christ, teach and train them to live as children of God, and to thrive into who He created them to be. We believe that this is the best time on earth to be alive, to experience the end time harvest of souls for the kingdom of God. Get ready to be renewed, recharged, and restored to go out and take the gospel to your world. Paul said, my preaching and my, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, my preaching and my teaching is not with enticing words of men's wisdom. I don't want to tickle your ears, he said, but it's a demonstration of the spirit of God and the power of God that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. My preaching and my teaching is not a demonstration. It is not, my preaching and my teaching is not with enticing words of men's wisdom. But my preaching and my teaching is a demonstration of the spirit of God and the power of God that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. God wants you to have faith in his power and his presence. Not his presence without his power, but in his presence and in his power. Everything you need for God to do to bring you through to victory, he's already done. In fact, it's already your victory. Thanks be unto God, Corinthians says, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. You know that we always win? I don't care how bad it looks out there, how, how big the devil looks, how, 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 how he walks around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. He ain't got nothing on God. He ain't nothing but, the, he ain't nothing but a, an appearance or acting like a lion, but he's not a lion. He always wants to be like God. He can't do it. He's trying to be like the, tribe, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus, he ain't even close. He's just a shadow. He's just a, he's just a he just looks like it. He goes around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. And one day we'll look at him and go, this is the one that deceived the nations? This son? This, this, this being deceived me? He'll speak words that are contrary to God's word and get you off every time. You can be in the word of God and you, when you begin to question it, it's the devil trying to get you to take your eyes and your heart <clears throat> and your faith out of what God's word says because he knows that if this word gets on the inside of you and you believe it and you get full of faith about it, you'll change the word around it. What you believe will change the world. Yes. What Jesus believed changed the world, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> Forever. And he said we're called to be like him. That means we should believe and see things change. In line with God's kingdom. We're not coming up with any of our own ideas. All we're doing is coming into God's kingdom through his manifested Holy Spirit living in us and we manifest the presence of God and power of God wherever we go. Not because we're anything, because we don't deserve to do anything. We don't get what we deserve. That's the mercy of God because we deserve to go to hell. But what we got was his presence and his power and a relationship with God just like Jesus. We didn't deserve that. That's his grace. Ah, <clears throat> And, and Ephesians calls it the Passion Translation, the superabundant grace. Now, there's some naysayers out there always talking about God's people. And I'm talking about believers or so-called believers, always talking about those that believe God and, and miracles, signs, and wonders follow. And I'm sure there's some, anytime there's some fire, there's always some wildfire around. Amen. You start pressing into the things of God and you get around people. Some people act crazy. I don't think Jesus act crazy, <clears throat> but Brother Hagen used to say, I'd assume, I'd rather, I mean, I, like I, we used to go to his meetings in, in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Broken Air, and I had to put on blinders like this, because there were some nutty acting people out there. Well, I didn't want one they had, I wanted what he was preaching. I wanted the truth of God's word to hear what his revelation that the God had given him, but when you look at the word of God, you can see it, because God wants to reveal to us himself. He wants us to know him. He wants you to know him intimately. Right? He wants him, he wants you to know him, and he wants to know you. He wants to know you personally. 
He wants to live an eternal life with you. Jesus says, I'm going to pray. The Father's going to give you the Holy Spirit to abide with you forever. Can you imagine that the Spirit of God is going to abide with you? Can you believe that the Spirit of God is going to live on the inside of you forever? The Spirit of God is the presence of God, and in Him is all knowledge, all wisdom, all discernment, all power, all peace, all love. And He lives right in here. You can get that through your head. You got to get it through here because this will tell you that there's no physical way that can happen, just like Nicodemus. Jesus, you mean I got to be born again? How can I be born again? Am I supposed to go back in my mother's womb a second time? Jesus looked at him and said, Nicodemus, aren't you a teacher? Don't you know these? How are you? If you're a teacher and you don't know these things, how are you, you going to teach anybody else? He was looking at it through the natural mind. <clears throat> and before we get born again, we looked at everything through the natural mind. But now we look at it through the kingdom realm of God and we discard the natural. I mean, you can, don't, don't, don't. your senses will tell you certain things. Some of those senses will arouse emotions in you. There's nothing wrong with your emotions unless they tell you something contrary to what God's word says. God has emotions. He gets angry. He has joy. He laughs. There's nothing wrong with those emotions unless you believe them more than you believe the word of God. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> you got to make up your mind you believe God. If there's anything you take away from this church and this ministry, if anything else is you just determine you're going to believe what God said. Amen. Then go find out what he said. It will blow your natural mind. <clears throat> it, will, it, will, it won't be. <laughs> it ain't like church like you used to know. I'm so tired of the church being asleep and dead. I don't know what to do. I want to see the church be everything he, he's called us to be. And, and I, we can't act. If we're walking with God and God starts moving us, we can't look down our nose at other churches because we used to be right where they are. I know, I know. We used to be going to hell. What are you talking about? Yeah. Now we're in the kingdom. Yeah, and when we, when we come into this kingdom, we have to uh, put our hearts and mind in his word and have our minds renewed. Do you know when you get born again, your spirit man gets born again? But your mind is about like it was the day before? Except now you begin to see revelation. Paul tells us in Corinthians chapter 12, don't be conformed to this world. He's talking to believers. He's talking to spirit-filled believers. Amen. When, this, when the New Testament epistles were written, they're talking about talking to spirit-filled believers or people who become spirit will believers, spirit spirit filled believers. This ain't like second. This ain't like an extra credit. This ain't like a, a you know an elective that you're filled with God. It was His plan for us. It, it, it was part of the, the part of the new covenant that God had before the world was created. He, he, he had a covenant with Abraham. Then He says, "I got another covenant coming." Mm, thank you, Lord. And on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God was poured out upon humanity in that upper room where 120 disciples, should have been three, should have been 500 of them, but only 120 of them stuck it through. They didn't get deceived. They may have questions, but they stayed. Amen. And God poured out a Spirit upon them. Fire sat down on all of them, didn't consume Ooh. them, but the fire of the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in tongues and prophesy, and the whole town heard them. <clears throat> it came as a sound of a Russian mighty wind. It wasn't a Russian mighty wind, but it sounded like it. And it came from that place where they were. Wow, wow. And the whole city, it was, it was during a festival, and it was Passover. And the whole Shavuot, I think is what it's called. All this, there were, there were pilgrims and people from all over had come to the city. And they heard them yelling and screaming in tongues. And some of them said, man, those people were drunk. And Peter comes out and says, no, no, no. These people aren't drunk as you suppose. <clears throat> They're just filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, this is that that was prophesied by Joel. Hallelujah. He says, in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons that pour out my spirit, <clears throat> I will pour out my spirit. This is what Jesus prayed, knowing what was coming because God had revealed it to him. It was in the scriptures. 
This is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. Jesus says, I'm going to pray. Right before he goes to the cross, he tells him, I'm going to pray, and God's going to give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit, to abide with you forever. He hadn't given it to him yet. But yet he's seeing that the disciples are seeing the manifestation of God living in someone and that person living in God. Hallelujah. And Jesus, Jesus had talked to him about it. And from now, he said, where are you going? I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he said, I know where you, you know where I'm going. Thomas said, we don't know where you're going. How do you know the way? <clears throat> he says, I am the way. I am the truth and I'm the life. That is true, but that's not the point of that scripture. I am the way. I am the truth and I'm the life. From now on, anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. From now on, you've known the Father and you've seen the Father. Mm. Why? Because he's living in him. Amen. And Jesus was so yielded to the Father that all you really saw was the expression of God through Jesus, his son. Amen. God expressed himself so that humanity would know him. Nice. He wants you to know him. Amen. And Jesus said, if you see me, you have seen the Father. How can you say, show us a Father? Don't you believe the Father's living in me and I'm living in the Father? The words, I, 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 I quote this every week, but it's so good. The words I speak to you are not my own, but they come from the Father who lives in me, who performs these miracles, signs, and wonders through me. He already said in John 5, I can do nothing of myself, but he wasn't by himself. (laughs) Hallelujah. Don't you believe I'm living in him and he's living in me? The words I speak are not my own, but they come from my Father. For he lives in me and performs his miracles signs and wonders through me. Don't you believe I'm in in one with my father, my father's one with me. Or at least believe me for the miracle signs and what you see me do. He said, you ought to know I can't do this. (laughs) Nicodemus said, Jesus, I don't know much about you, but I do know this. You you must be with God because you can't do what you're doing without God. Oh, come on. Come on. You know, the world ought to say to you, I don't know much about you people, but you must be walking with God because y'all can't manifest what you're manifesting without God in you. Amen. Amen. We should be like him. Woo. We're disciples of his. What's our goal? Yeah. To be like him. Amen. And he told us that if we would believe on him, the works he did, we would do in greater works. Amen. How would we do it? Well, we can't do it without the power that he had. If he said we would do the works that he did in greater works, and yet we've been told that he had the spirit without measure, but we get the spirit with measure, then how in the world are we going to do what he did if we only have a measure of what he had available to him? Come on, preacher, come on. We get the full measure of God, come on. We had this tendency as humanity to look for the lowest common denominator in everything that we see. I'll give you an example. I've given this before. But the father that brought his son to Jesus, who had a demon spirit, who the disciples did not cast out, but they could have. And when Jesus saw him, he says, you unbelieve in things? Why would he say you unbelieve? Because they should be doing what he's getting ready to do. Amen. He's in the back of the boat. It's about to sink. He's asleep. The boat's about full. He's not on the pontoon. He's laying down below the bow and the sides of the boat. He must be somewhat submerged in water, yet he's still asleep. And they wake him up. Oh, Jesus. Sometimes we pray, oh, Jesus, will you fix this for me? And he's already fixed it for you. (laughs) And he's like, well, I fixed it for you. If that don't work, I don't know what to tell you. Because it's done. It's complete. Jesus, wake us up. Can't you see we're about to perish? Save it. Can you imagine? Oh, Jesus, son of David, wake save us. He says, you don't believe in things? How long am I going to be with you? How long am I going to suffer with y'all? Then he stands up. You know, he was laying down when he still started rebuking him. He didn't spring to his feet and said, oh boy, I'm glad you woke me up because we were just all about to die. <laughs> Come on. Jesus Come already on. settled it in his heart. He said, we're going to the other side. Mm-hmm. He said it. That's it. That fig tree he spoke to, that was it. He said, we're going to the other side. That's nothing. Devil's not going to stop him unless he got in fear or unbelief. But he said, we're going to the other side. Then he said, peace to the wind, be still. 
Why do you say wow. peace to the wind first? Because that's what makes the waves. Come on, preacher, come on. And then he looked at them and says, where is your faith? Where, where, guys, <laughs> he, could, he could say, I'm going to be here three and a half years, and your clock's ticking, and you ain't getting it yet. What, what, what are y'all waiting on? He would tell us today, we've had this for 2,000 years. What are we waiting on? Come on, come on. When are we going to start believing God and do what he said do? Amen. Go back to the Father, go back to the Father that brought his son to, to the disciples. They couldn't cast him out. Jesus says, yes, you could have, but you didn't. It wasn't that you could not. It wasn't that you weren't able. You did not through unbelief. Bring him to me. Bring him to you. Yeah, I know what to do with him. Bring him. And when the demon in that boy saw Jesus, he threw the kid on the ground. He began to wall and foam. And Jesus goes, how long has he been like that? Jesus, wait a minute. come on, do something. He's having a seizure. How long has he been like that? He's just talking to the father. How long has he been like this? <laughs> of a child. And often it tries to throw him in the water to kill him or the, in the fire to and the water to drown him, the fire to kill him. But if you can do anything, have compassion and help us. Jesus goes, if I can do anything, think about that. You sometimes go to God and say, Lord, if you can do anything, he goes, if I can do anything. Come on, come on. He will turn that right back to you because you cannot tell him. If you've been in here more than a couple of weeks, you know some stuff. Come that, on, that you come didn't on, get it down to the Presbyterian church. Come on, come on. Or the Methodist church where I came from. And what they're giving some of them now, it ain't, ain't what you want. I know, I know. He said, how long has he been like this? And if you can believe, if I can believe, if I can do anything, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that right. believe. And the spirit in that man, Jesus had come out of him, and that spirit ripped out of that boy so hard that he fell motionless on the ground. And everybody there said, he's dead. He's not dead. You, you went to the worst. At least you could say, maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's going to get up and go. But no, they went to the very worst possible scenario, which is what your fleshly mind will tell you whenever a situation comes, your mind will tell you or the devil in your head telling you it ain't going to work. Come on, preacher, come on. And Jesus said, he's okay. And grabbed him by the hand and pulled him up. Don't think the worst. Think the best. Trust God. Amen. Don't take God's word and look for the lowest possible way you can get through it. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind <clears throat> so that that word of God will have no limits in your heart. Because he's able to do Far over, he is able to do far over and above all that we could dare, ask, think, pray, dream, according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. Not you, but the power of God that works in you. <clears throat> you see, God lives on the inside of us. He lives on the inside. If you've been born again, and you've asked him to fill you with the Holy Spirit, he didn't say, well, you didn't, you're not ready. I won't give it to you. No. no. <laughs> if you ask God to give it to you, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. He that wavers is like the wave at a sea. That wave at the sea is not in control of his own destiny. <clears throat> it's driven and tossed by the wind. If you don't believe, James told us to tell you don't expect to receive anything because you'll be driven and tossed by the devil in his words he puts in your head and you'll do without because you fail to believe God. Come on, preacher. That's a good word. Now go Come back on. to where we started. My preaching and my teaching, Paul says, is not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but it's a demonstration of the Spirit of God and the power of God. That your faith not right not west in the wisdom of men. Mm. There's nothing wrong with the wisdom of men that comes from God. Because he's God. preaching the wisdom of God through his word and the gospel he preached. And he's a man displaying wisdom. Not just worldly wisdom, but godly wisdom. Amen. Amen. But he didn't want you to have faith in the wisdom of men, but in the power of 
God. Wow. Wow. God wants you to have faith in his miracle, dynamic power. Amen. Amen. How's that? Because God lives in us. If we ask him. Thank you, Lord. And as I mentioned earlier, the epistles, they were written to the body of believers who believed in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> People who read it don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't make any sense to them. They can't explain certain parts. Well, you just don't understand this thing. Or you just read stuff and when it says things like, if you believe on me, the works I do, you do greater works because I'm going to be my father. And you, greater works than you. Well, jump over that because that don't make no sense to me. Go on down and keep reading and forget about that stuff that's beyond my thinking. <clears throat> God, wants you to, God wants you to hear those things and consider them and believe it. Believe it. Come on. This believe is... The word. Here's a, just a couple little scriptures that take us there. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 11. From the moment John the Baptist stepped onto the scene until now, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth. Wow. The realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth. And the glory of God was manifested through Jesus. <clears throat> it was not his glory he was operating in. It was in the glory of God in him. Amen. Amen. Abraham and Sarah received a son and gave God glory. Woo. That doesn't mean they went, well, look, we have a baby. Glory to God. Uh-uh. God and his, his omnipotent power, his all-consuming power manifested through a heart of faith, through an impossible situation and released the glory of God for all to see. There's, there's Isaac. That's his son. They couldn't have a son. And they gave God glory. Not verbal glory, but they let their manifestation of God move through them so God's glory would be on display. Wow, wow. <clears throat> We're going to read something in a second. But God's not trying to hide that from the world. He's looking for people to move through. Come on, come on. Because he chose to come through us. Come on. Amen. Oh, boy. Uh, from the moment John stepped on the scene, kind, the kingdom realm of God is bursting forth. And then it says this, impassionate people take it by force. <clears throat> Passionate people take this manifested power of God, this kingdom heavenly realm, <clears throat> they grab it and they take it by force. Amen, amen. The, uh, the King James says, the kingdom of God suffers violence, the violent take it by force. You're going to take this violently by force. You're going to fight the devil to get it. Come on, come on. He has no weapons to stop you except deception. Yes. Nothing. All the authority, all power in the universe has been given to Jesus. That means Satan has none. none. He doesn't have authority. He doesn't have power. He has Authority and power through people who yield to him. And there is a world out there that has totally yielded to him and they're manifesting the darkness of the kingdom realm of Satan. Wow. But greater than he that's in us. He that's in us. Who's in us? God. Not some thing, but someone lives inside us. Oh, hallelujah. Greater is he that lives in me. That he doesn't, well, of course he is, because he's, he's above all things. Amen. Amen. He's in us, and he's right here. <laughs> what well, Andrew Womack says, when you, you pray, you're just looking down because there's God. You're, just, you're just talking to God because he's inside here. He lives inside of us. Hallelujah. Again, the New Testament epistles were written to spirit-filled believers who knew what God had called them to, and it's instruction on how to live as a church. And if you don't believe on the infilling of God, I don't mean getting born of God and God lives in you and, then the, and he's just hanging out there dormant. He lives in you for purpose <clears throat> and for power and for manifestation and for demonstration. Yes. And you yield to him 
and get yourself out of it so you don't take any credit for any of it. Come on, come on. The problem is when God starts moving, people start thinking it's them, and then they step to the forefront, they want all the glory. Well, they ain't no glory for that. And, and let me just tell you, when, when God poured out his spirit on all flesh, that prophet Joel prophesied about, and it took place on that day of Pentecost, and we may be getting close, I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly when that is. But it was 40 or 50 days after Passover. And 50 days after Passover, they were instructed by Jesus within at least the last seven days at the 40 to 43rd day, Jesus said, at the earliest. Now you go wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father you heard me speak about. Amen. Parentheses in the New King James, because it gives you cross reference, says John 14, 16, where he goes, and I'm going to pray. And God's going to give you another comfort, the Holy Spirit, to abide with you. He hasn't given it to you yet, but I'm going to pray. Listen to Jesus. This is a prayer of faith. I'm going to pray. God's going to give it to you. Amen. My goodness. Don't you think we ought to pray like that? I'm going to pray. God's going to manifest healing in your body. Because it's already done. Amen. I'm going to pray. God's going to give you another spirit, the Holy Spirit. To abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it doesn't see him or know him. But you know him because he's been with you. And he's been with him because he's walking in Jesus. And they've been with him. That means he's been with them. And the Holy Spirit's been with them. And he's been with the Holy Spirit. The disciples were with Jesus and the Holy Spirit because God was in him. They were like one. He's going to be with you. He's been with you, but he shall be in you. The way he's lived with you in the past has been with you. The old covenant was God with them. The new covenant that Joel talked about where God says, I will come and I will live in them. And I will write my words on their heart. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Amen. This new covenant that manifested on the day of Pentecost. Where God once walked with us, but now he lives in us. You you cannot escape his presence, nor that do you want to. But I'm saying, even if you wanted to, you can't get away from him because he loves you. He knows your thoughts. David said in one of the Psalms, he knows my words before I ever think to speak them. (laughs) Thank you for forgiving me for those words that came out that weren't what they supposed to be. Listen to this. That Jesus is praying, and these don't necessarily seem to be related, but they are. John 17, Jesus is praying. He's, he's getting ready to go back to the Father. It, it's a good thing I go for, away from you, he says, because when I go away, uh, you'll get the Holy Spirit sent to you. It, it's better for you that I go. You're going to be better off with him because you can't live with the Holy Spirit in you until I pay a price for your sins so you can be cleansed and become the righteousness of God and be fully right with God. Because you know the scripture in Romans says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The glory of God was still there. We just fell short of it. The glory of God was not released on the day of Pentecost. Because in Isaiah 6, I love this, he goes, holy Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The commander of angel armies. It's before Jesus. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Wow, wow. Thank you, Lord. The whole earth. In Isaiah chapter 6, when he's in the temple, he hears those creatures saying, Holy, holy is the Lord God the commander of angel armies, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Hallelujah. But because of sin, they fell short of the glory of God. Before sin, they walked clothed with the glory of God. Wow, wow. You know what God's desire for humanity is? For us to be filled with his glory on this earth, co-laboring with him to bring about his will to pass on this earth. Amen, amen. 
And, beca- well, and, and Satan strategically stripped that from them by getting them to de- deceive them to take their minds off the truth of God's word and they fell short and they fell into sin and fell short of the glory of God. The glory of God didn't just withdraw itself from this earth. It's still here. You mean the glory of God has always been manifested? I mean, how it always been present in, in, in permanence on this earth? Yeah, but it takes someone to connect to it. Come on. And that's what Jesus did. He went about and said, hey, understand this. If I cast a devil on that man, the kingdom realm of God has come near to you. Hallelujah. They're standing in the presence of the kingdom of God. And he said, but you reject it. And you won't see it. You have eyes to see, but you don't see. You have ears to hear, but you can't hear. And you have a heart that's hard. Unless at any time you make a difference in yourself, and then you have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand, then you'll be converted. Then, then I can heal you. Hallelujah. We keep waiting on God to do something. He's waiting on us to do something. Amen. Amen. He's waiting on us to believe him. Amen. Gosh. Wow. Wow. He wants us to know him. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by the word of God. And without the word of God, there was not one thing made that was made. In him, in this word, was life. And this light was the light of man. Things around verse 10 says, As many as received him, Jesus, the word of God that became flesh, he gave them the power to become who they truly are, the sons and daughters of God. Wow, wow. He became flesh and dwelt among us. And John 1.18 says, Jesus came to represent to a lost world the Father. To represent, to present again to humanity who God is. Amen. Hallelujah. And here's a scripture that we use all the time. And it's a good one, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world that whoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. He tells us in Hebrews, it's not God's desire that any man perish, but all would come to the knowledge of the truth, the Amen. knowledge of God. In Ephesians 1, he prays that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. He gives, we pray that God gives us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of our understanding enlightened, we would know what is the expectation of the calling that he has on our life. Come on, come Without on. knowing who God is, you won't know what your calling is on this earth. Come on. But have the eyes, of your eyes flooded with light so you would know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches, listen to this, of the glory of the inheritance in the saints. And what is exceeding greatness of his power in us and for us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ. This miracle working power of God that lives in us is the same power God used when he raised Christ from the dead. And the Passion Translation says, and this, this, this according to the power that worketh in us, that we become an advertisement from God, the manifestation of God's presence and power blowing through us, which is an advertisement for God. Woo! Our lives will become an advertisement of God's presence and power. Amen. Bring God's dinner food. Bring him in. Bring Don't him tell in. me we're not supposed to be like him. Don't tell me his church is not supposed to walk in miracles, signs, and wonders. Come on, preacher, come on. The thing that drew the crowd with Jesus, because people would come and by his compassion and love and to manifest God's will and what he did, he healed them. Why? Because it was God's will for them to be free from Satan's power. Amen. How God anointed, Acts 10, 30, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that oppressed the devil. I don't know about you and all those nations, but healing is good. It's not of the devil. It's good. And they say, well, you're just casting out the devils by the devil's gifts. Let me think. 
If I'm casting out the devils by the devils, it would not be a divided house. Nope, that can't be right because a divided house would not stand. Come on, preacher, come on. Furthermore, if Jesus is casting out the devils and contrary to God's will, then he's not working with God. He's working against him. No, how God anointed Jesus. He didn't anoint Jesus Christ. He anointed Jesus of Nazareth who became the Christ who went about with the Holy Ghost in power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him and in him. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you, if, if you allow God to live in you, then don't, don't quench his spirit. Don't quench his spirit. Don't break his heart. Yield to him and let him move through you. Live a life of purity. Live a holy life because that's the kingdom of God. It's, it's a holy kingdom. It's holy and sanctified unto God. Why well, just can't be holy? It says who? Holy means you're separate. Does it mean you're pious? Does it mean you're religious? In fact, you're not religious. You're separated unto God. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. Wow, wow. Oh, that's key. Then love him and keep his commands. Jesus said, what good is it to you to call me Lord? So many people go, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe you've God raised him from the dead. Now I'm saved. Did you confess by faith that he's Lord of your life? Come on, come on. Because I'll give you a scripture to back that up. Just because you go Jesus is Lord doesn't mean he's Lord. Come on. I mean, I hear people say Jesus Christ and don't even know God. They go, Jesus H. Christ. I say, yeah, he's strong, he's powerful, and he lives in me. People use his name to curse. That don't mean nothing. That doesn't mean he's Lord. But when you go, Jesus, I surrender. You are Lord of my life. How do you know that took? Because he told me, if I believe in my heart and confess it with my mouth, and I believe what I say will come to pass. I'll have what I say. Believe in your heart. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Jesus, you're Lord of my life. Luke 6, he goes, Luke 6. He goes, what good does it take good do you to call me Lord if you don't put into practice what I teach? Come on, come on. You mean I do these things, I put into practice what he teaches so I can call him Lord? No, you, 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 you behave that way because he is your Lord. Hallelujah. I don't do that to get something. <laughs> I've already got it. I got it without effort. I got it by faith and grace and mercy, but I got it because he gave it to me and he wants me to know it. Jesus is telling them how to pray. Well, he's praying in front of them. He said, eternal life is to know you and experience you as the only true God and to know and experience Jesus Christ as a son that you sent. Wow, wow. Eternal life is to know you, God, as the only true God. Now, eternal life, we know that he wants us to have eternal life. It's not God's desire that any man would perish, but all come to the knowledge of the truth. Well, if he wants us to come to the knowledge of the truth, he wants us to know him. Amen. He wants us Amen. to live with him forever. What's eternal life? To know him as God. Whoa, so we go back to the prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation I put it this way, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of you, God, that the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, I would know what is the expectation of good of the calling that you have on my life. And what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance oh, and the saints? Hallelujah. And what is exceeding greatness of his power? according to the working of his mighty power. To those who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and he set him in his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that's named, not only in this world, but in that world which is to come and put all things, all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Yes, and he alone is a source and head of everything needed in the church. And we 
are his body on the earth and the completion of him that fills all things with his presence flowing through us. That's the passion translation. And then a new way they did it. And we are his church and that which fills him who is being filled by it. (laughs) My goodness. God wants us to be filled with him which fills Christ in us. (laughs) He allows us to be filled with that which fills him. <laughs> Man, if you're uh, if if you're you was not on fire's wit, bless God, hallelujah. And, and I'm preaching better than you're shouting because I'm only saying what God said. <laughs> when I say what He says, it's a whole lot better than what I say. I mean, bless God, it's good. Amen. My notes say, God wants everyone to know it. He wants everyone to know that God lives in you. Hallelujah. He didn't want you to think you're somebody of yourself, but that you're a yielded servant and son filled with God, manifesting his presence wherever you go. Because he said for us to do so. Y'all just, y'all just trying to be like Jesus. Amen. Because he told us to. I'm not trying Jimmy Noble to be like Jesus of Nazareth. I'm Jesus. I'm Jimmy, the son of God, the brother of Jesus, filled with him, called to his calling that he has on my life, and I'm trusting him and his power to manifest the will of God that he has for my life. All I am is a yielded vessel following where he says go and doing what he says do. It ain't got nothing to do with me except I say, yes, sir, Lord of my life. Jesus was the most yielded of them all. No one's ever yielded to God like Jesus. And he was exalted to the highest place above every principality, power, rule of darkness in this world and the world is to come. Why? Because he yielded to God. Hallelujah. And we yield to God with Jesus. We're co-heirs of everything that he has. Thank you, Lord. Thank Don't you, Lord. tell me you're poor. Don't tell me you're sick. Don't tell me you're broke. Don't tell me you're depressed. Don't tell me you're under, uh, under bondage. Because you've been made free. Woo! You just ain't Woo! found out or you ain't exercising yet. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, the church needs to wake up. We ain't doing that. We're going to try to go there and have chicken dinners. And then let's go have a family night. And let's go do this. And then let's go live in the world and just kind of bind and get through until we can get back to our pew next Sunday and then be another Christian by sitting in the pew. You didn't get saved to sit in the pew. You got saved to be the body of Christ. Woo! You're called to be, go do what he did. Not sit in some church and not be like the world. The the, the church is trying to be like the world. Well, we need to be compliant to everybody. No, only those that walk the straight and narrow come into the kingdom. But it's the easiest walk you ever took. Straight and narrow is the way. Yeah, all right, then be straight and narrow and come in. The devil's trying to keep you out. God tried, he, he, he did everything he needed to do to say. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> the biggest, uh, biggest torment of hell will be knowing that you had wow. what you now, wow. what you, what you not take partake of. That you had as an inheritance because you were born on this earth, everything that God had in him and in his son. Wow. And because you rejected his truth, or no one brought you the truth, or you got hung up in religion and couldn't hear the truth, you, you, re- you rejected God. The world that they're out there that's trying to get, convince us that what they're doing is okay, they're just looking for truth. And you can't make up your own truth. There's only one truth. Woo! The truth, the truth. Hallelujah. This is the truth. Glory. His word is true. Jesus is the word of God. He is the truth and the way and the life. Amen. Anything outside of them, it just ain't true. Well, I don't care if it's true to you, true to me. It doesn't make a difference what you think or what I think. Do you think this kind of behavior is a sin? Why don't you ask God what sin come is? On, come on. The government doesn't tell you what sin is. They can make up laws. And they can, they've had laws that used to be against the law. Now they're okay. Well, then which one is true? Come on, Not, come it, on. it could have been one or the other. It could be done. But if you want to know the truth is, ask God. He'll tell you what the truth is, and he'll tell you what sin is. Sin not only 
is doing what God says don't do. Also sin is doing what he says don't do or not doing what he told you to do. Come on, that's a good word. Come he said, on. go into all the world, make disciples of all nations. Are you doing it? Come on. Come well, no, on. brother, no, I'm not a disciple. I'm not an evangelist. Well, he said for you, every, every believer to become a disciple of Christ, go make disciples. Why, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, then get out of sin and go do it. Come on. Come do on. what he said do. Come on. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Well, I don't know how to do that. Well, it doesn't make a difference. Start loving him. Do you know I've never, I've never once had anybody tell you how, how you can love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. They just tell you that's what you got to do. And the healing's for today, and they don't tell you nothing about that. You just walk around and say, well, healing's for today, but I sure ain't got it. Well, you need, that's a proclamation of truth. Yes, God wants you healed. Bless God, Brother Noble. God wants me to be healed. How do I get healed? Ah, you need some teaching. Come on, come on. And you come can't on. go teach some doctrine to men. You have to, de- to teach the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Amen. And what did he tell the man that brought his son? If I can do anything, if you can believe, all things are possible him to believe. You know another thing he said when we talk about the glory? When Mary's talking to him, he said, Lord, I know you can do everything. And if you hadn't come and done this with dead, he said, Dad, I tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Wow, wow. There's something about us coming into agreement with God and believing him that taps into a portal of his kingdom and releases his glory in our wow, manifest presence. Wow. Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Do you know what the glory of God looks like? Look at Jesus. Ooh. Everywhere he went, he released God's glory and manifested the rule and reign of God's kingdom on this earth. Thank you, Lord. Where men put up fences against him, God's not breaking through. He will speak. But if they want to stay over there, he'll leave them. One mm. guy came to Jesus, what have I got to do to inherit eternal life? He says, keep the commandments. He says, I've done that since my youth. What else? He said, Jesus gets a message from the Father because he only says what he sees his Father only he, only he says what he hears his father say. God must have told him, tell him, there's one thing you lack. Go take everything you got, sell it, and give it to the poor and come and follow me. Is that a command he gives to everybody? No. This guy did. He said, go take, unless he, God tells that to you. But he says, go take everything you had and sell it and give it to the poor and come follow me. Well, there's one scripture he should have known about. If you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord, he'll pay you back. That guy could have taken everything he had and given to the poor and said, now I just put that in the, in the loan to God and I'm going to follow Jesus. And if I ever need to tap in that, I just ask God for a payback. Because everything he had, he gave to the poor. He loaned it to God and he, God said, I will pay it back. Not in, that, not in the world to come, in this lifetime. Amen. Amen. And he said, for those who follow me and give up houses and families and stuff like this, I'll pay you back a hundredfold. In this lifetime. In this lifetime. Hallelujah. The guy walked away because he had riches. Guess what Jesus said? Bye. Jesus, don't you want to catch him? Pull him back? No, it's, he's, he's sharing his heart. Everything that heaven contains has been lavished upon us as a love gift from a wonderful heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. But God can't make you take it. He could have made you take it, but he chose to let you be free will being to choose for yourself. You can choose. He said, I set before you, I call, he said, I call heaven and earth to record this day. This is from Deuteronomy. Amen to that. Maybe not, maybe not amen to that. I call heaven and earth to record this day, to write this down. Heaven, write this down. Earth, write it down. I set before you, humanity. Life and death, blessings and cursings, healing, sickness, prosperity, poverty. You choose life so that you, you choose. You mean you said before me this and this? Yeah, you choose which one you want. You mean, Brother Noah, you can choose that? Not because I said so, but because he said so. I set before you life and even these things I'm reading to you from Ephesians and what I'm going to read to you from Colossians are yours for the taking if you believe him. Amen. 
Yeah, I can't make you take it. All I can do is give it to you. But bless God, I'm going to give it to you because I want you to. I, I, when Paul says, it's my passion to enlighten you. I'm like, yeah, that's what I feel. Every morning I get up here, I'm in, I'm, I'm have a passion to enlighten you, not with me, but with the light of the gospel kingdom. So it will come into your heart, illuminate, and you'll know God and begin to follow him and do what he said do so that you can walk in his blessings and peace and power for you and your children, their children, their children. God wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. But he's got to get past your mind. He's got to get past your worldly way of thinking. And if you're in the street, nothing ever works for me. Well, why do you believe that? That's what you believe. You just confess it with your mouth and nothing's working. Your faith is working perfectly fine. You need to start saying what God says like when we put these things up here. You don't have to say these if you want to. It only makes sense to do so. Jamie was in a million in debt. I was millions in debt. Not one, not two, probably about three. And I was, and I was broke. And I began to confess what God said about me. And in time, it turned. I didn't, I didn't declare bankruptcy. I said, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to get out of this. Yeah, hallelujah to him because he did it. And he told me how to get through it. And I'm telling you what he told me, what his word tells you, how to get through it. Whatever it is you're getting through, you'll get through it. You can put this up if you want to, James. Colossians 1, 26, 28. This is no longer divine mystery. Now it's been, it's been revealed for 2,000 years. One of the things Paul kept talking about, there, there was a mystery that God had because he had these ruling council with him that ruled this earth. He gave them different ones assignments, principalities and powers. A lot of them went rogue. Okay, read Psalms 82. I can't fully explain it, but he had people that he had created, beings that he had created. They were probably higher order than angels, but they ruled with him. And they had parts, principalities, and powers, and they turned. And he tells them, you're going to die like mortal men because you didn't take care of the poor. You didn't take care of the desperate, the ones that are out and overseas. You did not, you did not, allow, you did not enforce justice. And you let this wickedness of this world strip and tear up our, our social structure of this thing I put on this earth. Come on, he said, y'all go. Give me one man to work with. Oh, and he found one. He must have called Abram's father first, but he stopped in Tehran. And then that was as far as he went. He says, Abram, get up and go to a place I'll show you. I'll make of you a great family, a great tribe, a great nation. I'll bless you, Abraham, and I'll bless those that bless you. And through you and through your seed, all I need is one believing person. I'm going to find one seed that's going to bless all. In spite of these other principalities and powers, I'm going to find one that will change the whole world. Regardless of the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness who now are and, and work in tandem with Jesus, who, I mean, Satan, who was the God of this world, and Jesus overrode Satan, who was the God of this world. He stripped him of his power, and yet if you believe Satan, he, you give him his power back, but not against the church. Come on. And he, Come on. he said, I, you just give me one person, and I'll reach the whole earth. And he found one, and from his seed came Jesus, who's the one he said, I will, he's going to change the whole world. And in spite of the authority and power that the kingdom of darkness has, all he needed was one man to believe him so that his son would be born on this earth and come and make his way and live on the inside of us, and, and we would take, take these things out of here. Woo, hallelujah. And we have hallelujah. the victory of God. All right. There's a divine mystery, a secret surprise that has been hidden for generations from the world. But now it's being revealed and unfolded and manifested for every holy believer to experience, to experience. In the, in the Amplified translation, in the, the prayer in Ephesians 3, said that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith and that we, rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ as past his knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of you. That we may experience, which far surpasses, we may experience, may know and experience, and Amplified says, 
the love of Christ, to know and experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. God wants you to know, but knowing's not enough. He wants you to know and to experience Hallelujah. God's manifest goodness. Amen. Amen. My preaching and my teaching is not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but it's a demonstration of the Spirit of God and the power of God. That your faith, those hearing, his gospel truth, would, their, your, your faith would not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The example of that, when the woman that was at the well, the Samaritan woman, she went down and told everybody what Jesus did. And then he, they came up and talked to him. He said, please stay with us. And he talked to them for two, three days. They said, now we believe, not because of what you told us, because we heard it ourselves. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo. As the word of God is manifested and preached to you, it's not the, it's not the messenger, it's the message. Oh, and that on, message that comes in there is alive and full of power. And yeah. it will change your life. Double-edged. When we found out that this was the way that God's kingdom operated, I wanted to tell everybody. I, I, man, I would go tell the dog and the cat and the cow and the lamb and the chickens. <laughs> I want to tell everybody. It's not what you think. It's not what we've been told. It's much, much better than you can imagine. And God loves you. And he longs to live on the inside of you. Yes. Like that crazy grandfather I had, they thought that he had this tongue-talking guy. He was on the truth. <laughs> Come on. Come and any time God's manifest power, truth, his goodness, his healing, his deliverance comes, there are also naysayers who talk against the things of God and try to strip the power. And who are they working for? The devil. And when he, the religious leaders came to Jesus, he said, yeah, well, Abraham's our father. I said, no, 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 no. If Abraham was your father, <laughs> that's a good one, boy. Said, <laughs> if Abraham was your father, you'd believe me, but you don't. Come on, come on. You're of your father, the devil. And he's talking to the religious leaders of his day. He didn't really care what they thought, except for the fact maybe they may hear him and get it. And some Pharisees did. And he wasn't trying to build a mega church either. They had a huge crowd one time after he fed everybody, and he starts talking about, you gotta eat. if you want to live eternal life, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. <laughs> they went, psh, scattered, down to 12. He said, how about you guys? You leaving too? <laughs> I'm not trying to build a big, I am trying to build a big church, but I'm, I'm going to tell them the truth. It's going to separate those the ones that really want the truth and those who just want to be tickled. Oh, come on. The truth will make you free. Come on, come on. Sometimes the truth will, will, will hurt you. Sometimes it will tell you, all these things I've been taught, all the things that my mama taught me, my daddy taught me, my granddaddy, my grandparents on both sides, they weren't telling me all the truth. They were bringing me to the church, but they didn't tell me what to do when I got there. On, I came to church on. and sat in the pew. I figured I'm just going to do like my daddy and just sit in the pew the rest of my life. Instead of becoming the body of Christ on the earth. Amen. Amen. All right, let me, let me finish this. Praise God. This mystery, the mystery he's talking about, they they thought that the Jews were the chosen ones. We on this side of the cross, we know that this message came from the Jew first and then the Gentile because Paul would begin to reveal it. But in their day, they didn't know this. They felt we're chosen people. And if you don't belong to us, you're you're goim, you're 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 the world and you're not of God. But all they had to do is go back and look at what he said to Abraham. I'm gonna bless you, Abraham, and bless you and through you and through your seed all Nations of the earth will be blessed. It was always a global outreach. And the children of Israel didn't know it. He's telling this mystery that was hidden before because God wants to reach everybody by this grace. Don't have to be circumcised. Don't have to keep up with those things. Just open your heart to his truth. Amen. That's the mystery. That was a secret. One of them. God wants everybody to experience living, living. And let me repeat that last line. But now it's being revealed and unfolded and uh, manifested for every holy believer to experience. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. Living within you is the Christ who floods your inner being with a hope, with an expectation of God's manifested glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us 
becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of the glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. Man, man. Living within you is a Christ. And this Christ in you is a treasure chest. Like in those movies when they found the treasure, the pirates found it, and it was just filled with gold bullions. And this knowledge of Christ living in us is a treasure chest of the manifested hope of the glory of God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And it's within you. And God wants everyone to know. Wow! Wow! Let me read one more thing. I'll get to this next week. Well, not next week, but let's see here. This is in Ephesians 3, verse 9. My passion to enlighten, my passion is to enlighten every holy believer, every person to this divine mystery that was hidden from in the past and until now has been kept a secret in the heart of God, the creator of all. The purpose of this uh, was to unveil before every throne and rank of angelic orders in the heavenly realm, God's full and diverse wisdom revealed through the church. I'm not going to, I'm just going to read it. This perfectly wise plan was destined from the ages and fulfilled completely in our Lord Jesus Christ so that now we have boldness through him and access as kings to come before the Father because of our complete faithfulness in Christ's fulfillment. We have We have the boldness to come before God and complete confidence in what Christ has done and not be afraid of our past in front of him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He did this so that the principalities and powers and the ruler of darkness would see his infinite wisdom revealed through his church. (laughs) Don't tell me God doesn't care about the church. Come on. Oh, I don't believe in the church. Wait, you better not, you better be believing in God, then you better believe in his church. Well, I don't believe in the local church. Oh, really? God, through Jesus and the Holy Spirit, had John the Revelator write letters to seven local churches. You tell me he don't care about the local church? I can understand your frustration with religion. (laughs) And if they don't teach you the truth, where you go? But you find you a church that believes God. You find you a church that trusts God. And God will, through his communion and fellowship with the brethren, he'll raise you up to become everything you call. You're not called to be a solo member. You're a member of the body of Christ, which is the, the, holy, the holy Catholic church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ worldwide. And you belong to it. We're sitting in a church like that right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, there ain't, no, there ain't no place to unhook this train. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> oh, the train keep going. Come on. Come on. That word is so strong. Woo. I've been reading those, those passages for 30 years. I'm just now getting them. My goodness, what have I been reading? <laughs> Amen. Before we go, we're going we're gonna to pray for the sick. Jesus told us to. I'll give you a short word up here, written. This means something to this church and to this body, this outreach. Go into all the world, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to faithfully follow every command I've given you. Jesus comes to his disciples, Matthew 20, says, All the authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Now you go in my authority, make disciples of all men. Well, he's talking to the disciples. Yeah, but listen to what he says. Teaching them to faithfully follow every command I've ever given you. Amen. 
What was the last command he gave him? Go into all the world, make disciples. That's one of ours too. And in that, he also said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, cleanse lepers. Well, that was for the early church. Well, according to Matthew 28, that belongs to us. Amen. Well, I don't believe healing's for today. Well, then you need to believe God. God is Jehovah Rapha. He's a self-existent one. He reveals himself that he's always, because he's never, the, he never changes. He's always the same. He is our healer. And how does he heal? Through his body on the earth. We are the completion of him and, and that which fills him, which being filled by it. We used to say when we go in these neighborhoods and we are his church, we the church are his body on the earth and the completion of him that fills all things with his presence flowing through us. All things. Come on. Come on. Well, it's up to you to believe it or not, but we're going to pray for the sick. Amen. First for cancer. If you have cancer in your body, I want you to stand your feet. If you have cancer, somebody in your family, somebody you know has cancer, stand your feet. If you have cancer, someone in your family, somebody you know has cancer in your feet. We've had some miraculous results. One of, the, yeah. one of my favorite ones is that when we were at King's Kitchen, the guy stood up for someone he knew in California that had cancer. They were the third or fourth stage, and he stood in the gap for her. We spoke to the cancer. We're not speaking to God to heal them. He's already healed them. Amen. We're going to speak to the cancer cells by the authority that we have as members of his body as ambassadors for God. And we can tell the fig tree to stop and dry up. We can tell the wind to stop, the wave to stop. We can tell a fever to leave. We can tell cancer to go. So we're going to speak to the cancer in their body. Amen. So if you have cancer in your body, or if you have any sickness, any disease, any kind of torment, any kind of persistent thing that you're standing and believing God for, stand up. If you want to be free, today's your day to be free. We're going to speak the healing power of God over you. If you're at home watching this or listening by podcast or by whatever means, thank God that you're here. But this is just for you as it is for for today, and this is, this is, this is May 19th, 2024. And if you don't hear this for 10 years, it still has as much power as it did when Jesus spoke it 2,000 years ago. Amen. Amen. So if you, if we're going to first speak to cancer, then we're going to speak for you of this sickness and diseases out here. Because he told us to do so. Amen. We're being obedient to what he says. Well, some people don't like it. Well, la di da. Whatever. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. The Holy Spirit tells us, be well balanced, prepared, and always alert because your devil, the de not your devil, your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a lion seeking who he may devour. He's not a lion, but he acts like one. Listen to the instruction. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. Amen. For you know your brothers and sisters around the world are also going through the same troubles you are. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when I tell you to call your name out, or whoever you're standing for, just call their name out loud. And don't be shy. We're going to speak to the cancer in their body, and we're going to call those bodies into uh, subjection, that cancer in their body into subjection by calling their name. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we curse cancer in the physical bodies of the people's names that we call out right now. Call your name out. Maureen. Kathy. Natalie, Sam, Lorna, Don, Taylor, Allie, Adora, RM, James, Phil, Lee, Margie. Cancer, we're speaking to you in these bodies. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we curse you to your core. And we command you to die. Cease and desist your maneuvers. Now come out of their physical bodies in Jesus' name and do not return. If, however, this cancer happens to be demonic, it's not physiological, it's this demonic uh, presence of some kind of demon, Jesus told us to cast out devils. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you foul unclean spirits of death and cancer in these bodies, we command you right now, loose them and let them go. Come out of their bodies now because we say so. Furthermore, if there's any cancer in this room, or within the sound of my voice, unseen, unknown. It's so small, you don't even know it's there yet. We don't have to wait for you to get big enough to see it. Any cancer said within the sound of my voice, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to die. And if you're demonic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, loose them and let them go and come out of their bodies in Jesus' name. And furthermore, anyone, any kind of torment, any kind of sickness, any kind of uh, head trauma, disease issues, blood issues, sugar issues, liver, 
uh, heart issues, brain issues, eye issues, muscles, uh, skeletal, skin, anything from the top of your head, the bottom, any kind of organ, any, any issues with your organ, any issue with your blood, with your urine, anything in your bowel, in your GI system, anyone has any kind of bondage, any kind of mental bondage, any kind of uh, spiritual bondage, any kind of uh, sexual perversion bondage. We break the power of the enemy off of you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command you, Satan, and your kingdom, loose them, let them go. We speak the peace of God, the healing of God from the top of your feet, the bottom of your, top of your head, the bottom of your feet. Every cell, every tissue, every fiber of your being and your spirit well-being and your soulish realm being alive to the life of God. We speak the peace of God that every cell functions in the perfection that God created to function, that you become everything that God's called you to be and you walk in the fullness of God's power and presence as he manifests through his kingdom in your body. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, real quickly before we go, just everybody just seated one more second. This is, uh, this is the kingdom part that we always want to make sure that we cover. If, if anyone here, we're, we've been talking today about this kingdom of God. It is a magnificent kingdom. Uh, one would be a fool to reject it. Maybe you've never heard about it this way, but you, you know you need God in your life. And you, the only way to come to God is through Jesus Christ. No man can come to the Father except through Jesus, he said. If you've never been born again, or maybe you've been born again before, and, and you want to walk with God again, pray this prayer with me. We're going to confess that Jesus is the Lord, believe that God raised him from the dead. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then are you saved? If you're watching online or listening to this tape later, this is just for you as well as anyone that's in this place. But I'm going to ask you to all repeat this with me. Also, we're going to ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit, just like we've been talking about. God wants to live on the inside of us. Yes. And he's waiting for the invitation. He will, not, he, will not, he will not overtake you. But if you ask him, he'll come in. Luke 11 says, if we who are evil know how to give good gifts to our kids, how much more would the Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Amen. Amen. All right, pray this after me. We're going to pray for God to, for to save us and then to fill us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repeat this after me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, today I confess that Jesus is Lord of my life. Father God, I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And according to your word and my confession of faith, I'm now saved. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace. And for the plan you have for my life, take my life and guide me in it. You also said that if I ask you, you would fill me just like you did for Jesus with your Holy Spirit. So fill me, Father. And I receive your Holy Spirit in me now, in presence and in power. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Woo. This is a good kingdom to belong to. Amen. Don't leave quite yet before I bless you. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and, and just stand still just a second. Or be disobedient. I don't care. Whatever. It's up to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. Now you have to repeat this. I'm just going to bless you. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his counts upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. His countenance upon you is face to face and give you, if you're face to face with God, you are at peace with God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All righty. God bless you. If you would, all you uh, good-looking men and strong women, help us put these tables and chairs together so we can feed you lunch. Amen. Hallelujah. Glad you made it. Thank you for being here with us on The Voice of Healing. 
When you're in Charlotte, North Carolina, join us for our 10 a.m. Sunday morning service. Our website, restoringplace.org, has all the details on how to find us. While you're on our site, check out ways you can volunteer at the Dream Center. Need someone to answer questions about us or pray with you 24-7? Call our prayer line at 704-246-4595.